Good evening everybody and welcome once again to the Vicarage. I'm Father John Barker and the Vicar of the Parish of All Saints, Harrow Weald. And we are live streaming our worship and will be live streaming our worship by the grace of God and if it will be God's will. Uh, this evening we will be live streaming our service of evening prayer from Common Worship. It is indeed feeling like evening in Harrow Weald. Uh, it's a dark grey evening, it's raining, it's, it's pretty miserable. But that doesn't mean that we don't have anything to thank God for. We have so much for which we need to give God thanks. And so, in three, four minutes time, we will read evening prayer. This evening, we commemorate Gregory the Great, who was... Pope in the seventh, uh, sixth, and early seventh century. As well as being a pope, he was a wonderful leader, and we'll reflect on his example briefly within our worship. And so, let's prepare ourselves for worship, and we listen to the choir of um, uh, Saint Martin in the Fields, a, an Anglican church in central London. And they're going to be singing, Lord for the Years. Lord for the years. A beautiful way to prepare ourselves for worship, reminding ourselves that although lots happens 
Lots of things happen in our lives. The constant is God with us. And this evening, as we worship, there are happy things and, of course, there are sad things. The happy thing, I see John Bob is worshipping with us, and so I can say to you, John Bob, in America, happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful day. And then also, anybody who is listening from Buxted or Hadlow Down, in our prayers this evening, we will commend to God's mercy the eternal and immortal soul of a dear friend of us all, Neil Kempson, whose struggle with pain is over. And we pray and we will pray that his rest with God may be eternal. Now, let us worship God. Evening prayer. I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Let us pray that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And so let's keep silence for a moment and share with God our thoughts at this time. So maybe... Thanks for a wonderful day for others, sadness at the loss of a dear friend. Whatever we're thinking, let's share everything. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our evening psalm, Psalm 114. Our refrain, Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea saw that and fled. Jordan is driven back. The mountains skipped like rams. The little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you were driven back, you mountains that you skipped like lambs, you little hills like young sheep, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the hard rock into a pool of water, the flint stone into a springing well. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. Strike the rock of our hard hearts, O God, 
and let our tears of joy and sorrow mould us to bear the imprint of your love given in Christ our risen Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Great and wonderful. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our evening reading from the Bible is taken from Mark's Gospel, verses from the uh, seventh chapter. I smile as I see that there's a typo. It is verses 24 to 30, not 303. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyria. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the lady asked and was discouraged by Jesus, but eventually she succeeded. And something about her impressed Jesus deeply. And what it was, was the clear evidence of her faith. Because of her faith, she was rewarded. This evening we commemorate Gregory the Great. Gregory was a Pope in the late 7th and early, so late 6th and early 7th centuries. So from 592 to 604. And of course that meant that he had great powers and a lot of responsibility and a lot of privilege but what is most remembered about Gregory is not his flair and his pomp and his his ceremony it was the evidence of his faith which has meant that he's become known not just as Gregory but Gregory the Great. Our Church of England has its roots in the vision of Gregory when he was Pope, one of the things he did was send Augustine and Miletus to work among the people of Anglia, the Anglo-Saxons in what we now call England. And even though they turned back and went home because they lost courage, they were reassured by Gregory and sent back again and the church was established. Augustine was the first Archbishop of Canterbury and the tradition 
continues through to the day with our Archbishop Justin. There's an example of his faith. Another thing that marked him was his humility and the peace that came out of him. He liked to call himself the servant of the servants of God. We are all servants of God as Pope Gregory regarded himself as our servant. He was a great preacher and I close with Gregory's comments on how to preach well. His words, not mine, but at the end I will say Amen. If a preacher does not denounce the wicked, he himself will be reckoned guilty. For only one who is not afraid to say what they rightly feel and does not blush to do so ought to be a defender of the faith. The preacher is a physician, a doctor, who does not blush to prescribe the medicines. Indeed, Amen. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Our New Testament canticle, the Magnificat. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. And now let us say our evening prayers. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we worship you this evening, we give you thanks for the example of Gregory the Great. May we learn from his example. May we share his humility. May we feel the internal peace that he felt. And may we share our faith encouraging others and keeping constant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This evening we give you particular thanks for our Church of England, which has continued since the time of Gregory, constantly evolving, 
continually changing. May we continue to change so that we can, in the best way possible, serve you and serve your people. May we be the servants of the servants of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we commend to you the cares and troubles of the world in which we are living. We pray for all of those who continue to be affected directly or indirectly by coronavirus. We pray for those who are tired, tired of working, tired of restrictions, tired by not being able to live their normal lives. May your peace surround them and give them strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those who we know and love, particularly those who especially need your peace within their souls and your strength to keep them going at this time. We continue to pray for our dear friend Doug Garrett and we pray that your peace may be with him. And in the silence of our prayers, we remember those who we personally know who particularly need to feel your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we remember those who we have known and loved who are with us no longer. This evening, we especially give thanks those of us who have had the privilege to know, to love and to be loved by Neil Kempson. We thank you that his struggle with pain is now no more. And we pray that his rest with you may be eternal. We commend to your mercy his immortal soul. And we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our evening collect. Merciful Father, who chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God, grant that like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming <coughs> your gospel to the nations and may ever rejoice to sing your praises through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship this evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Bob family, have a wonderful celebration and look after that very special person and make his day very memorable for all the right reasons. To friends in Hadlow Town, I share your sadness. And 
we'll be worshipping God again tomorrow. There'll be day prayer, and I'll be reading day prayer from All Saints. It'll be at 11.30 UK time. If you wish, I invite you to, to join us to worship together then. But until then, I wish you all a very safe, a very peaceful and a blessed evening and night's rest. Our closing music is chosen particularly with Neil in mind. It's again the choir of St. Martin in the Fields singing God be in my head and in my understanding. And my closing words, the closing words of this uh, song, God be at my end and at my departing. God be in my Thank you.